the Greenwich Economic Forum really can't say enough about that. Behind that in support is their governor, Ned Lamont. He is the governor of Connecticut and, of course, has a storied history here of doing business and attempting to keep business within Connecticut. Of course, all the idea of a transfer of Connecticut to maybe a greater New York business as well. Governor, thank you so much for joining Surveillance this morning. What are you going to do about Florida? What are you going to do about somebody in an X million dollar palace in Greenwich or someplace else, or somebody in a $122,000 rental paying 4000 bucks a month in Connecticut, and both these people say, I'm moving to Florida. What are you going to do about it? Tom, good to see you. First of all, this is not a soiree. This is a hard working group for the Greenwich Economic Forum. We have a lot of fintech and financial services um, here, expanding here, moving here. Uh, you're right, though. A lot of these uh, firms also have a foot down in Florida. So there's a little bit of a competition, Greenwich and Stanford and, um, and Miami. You know, when it comes to housing prices, we're very competitive. When it comes to uh, workforce and, you know, young, well-educated folks ready for the fintech world, um, Connecticut is very competitive there. And uh, we've had tens of thousands of new families move into the state of Connecticut, uh, you know, in each of the last few years. So uh, I think we're making progress. A lot of people want to be here. What is your most effective tax policy over the next five years to compete with the American South? Did you say tech or tax? Tax, T-A-X, tax policy. Connecticut, I don't know if you're aware, they have a few marginal taxes, to say the least. What are you going to do about tax policy in Connecticut? Well, look, um, I don't think we'll ever be as cheap as Florida when it comes to taxes, because they can tax sunshine and tourism. Um, but we have an amazing education system, uh, which is a big plus. Uh, we just reduced taxes for everybody earning up to about 250000 So we're the lowest in the region, so we're making a real progress there. We've eliminated the estate tax for everybody um, except for the very top 5% of people. So I take that to account, but I also have to sell Connecticut on the attributes. And that's uh, not just the lifestyle. That's not just the easy access to New York or Boston. Great place to visit, wouldn't want to live there. But also the quality of our education system and our workforce. How difficult, Governor, is it to really build up Connecticut at a time where they are, where you are losing population, when borrowing costs are where they are, where you don't have the leeway of borrowing to build so that they will come? Well, look, let's face it. Uh, we were flat as a pancake for 30 years there. And you're absolutely right. We were losing population. A lot of the older folks were going down to Florida. Uh, that's turning around a bit. You know, um, during the COVID days, our schools were open. Um, I, uh, a lot of folks moved into the state. Uh, a lot of them came from New York, uh, to be blunt about it. And, and they stayed. So our schools were expanding. You know, the biggest shortfall I've got is housing. I got to make sure we have enough housing for people here. There's a problem, though, with businesses. I mean, Frontier Communications was the latest going to, I believe, Dallas uh, from Norwalk, Connecticut. I mean, some businesses are looking for that tax advantage as well. It's not just older people in particular. I just am wondering how much you can really cater to the tax side of the equation when you can't plug the gap on the borrowing side simply because of where yields are. Well, I can tell you that... Um Frontier, which was newly bankrupt, did move their corporate headquarters, but, you know, all the staff is still here. But, you know, Citadel and Apollo and Digital Currency Group and Tomo all moved to the state. We're taking sort of a, an older economy and uh, slowly moving into a newer economy. So I, I like the trend there. You're absolutely right. Look, taxes is a variable. New England, Northeast is uh, more expensive than um, the Sun Belt, or as I call it, the Hot Belt. Um, but we're getting more competitive every day, and I think our workforce is a big advantage. Governor, do you have a migrant crisis? No, I wouldn't say it's a crisis, but I watch it carefully. Um, we've had a few thousand uh, migrants uh, come. Uh, we have a bit of a waiting list, but for us, a waiting list is uh, going from three weeks to three months. It's not uh, what it is in um, you know, New York and, um, and Texas. Well, we watch it carefully. Um, I, they've got to get control of the border. That's just the deal. You're a sanctuary state, aren't you? Am I right? No, that's not true. But um, we do have a couple of cities that um, claim that. Uh, but this is not a sanctuary state. We do take care of people uh, in need when they come to the state. But uh, again, I think um, 
That said, we've got to get control of the border. What do you make of the attitude changes in places like New York, where a year or so ago they were welcoming migrants and people seeking asylum, and, and now they seem to be turning their back on that, now they actually have to confront what that looks like? I think um, a moderate is a liberal who is bugged by reality. When uh, New York City has, uh, you know, hundreds of thousands of new migrants you got to take care of, you got to shelter. Um, uh, Kathy Hochul's been very outspoken on this, as has Eric Adams. Got to get these people, if they're there, um, uh, you're either going to be on welfare, they're going to have to be able to get a job. Um, it all circles back to the fact that you've got to control your border. So are we saying, Governor, that what we saw for much of the last several years around this issue was purely just virtue signaling without a price, and that it had now been mugged by reality? Well, let's face it. Um, We've had a lot of migrants coming across the border, you know, going back to uh, Donald Trump and caravans of terrorists, or whatever he said. Uh, but that said, um, we got to control that. Part of that is what you do at the border. Maybe you recognize Venezuela and do some things to mitigate the pressure for people wanting to come into the United States. Ned, I'm, I'm absolutely thr uh, thrilled to find how we're going to save banking in the Northeast. As you know, you had six football field platforms of UBS long ago and far away in Stamford. And that's sort of, it's not that it didn't work out, it's just technology advanced forward. With work from home, with technology, how does Connecticut stay financial? I think work from home, Tom, is um, a good trend for us in the sense that we used to have everybody commuting back and forth yeah. and um, into the city and down to Wall Street and the long haul. And then, as you point out, a lot of them wanted to be closer to a home, so they moved some of their headquarters out here. But what we're finding is maybe you're in the city two, three days a week. Uh, our Metro North trains on Friday are not crowded at all. In fact, they're virtually empty. We're going to cut down there a little bit just because people have a different lifestyle. And I think the fact that you can be closer to home out here in Connecticut, uh, and you don't have to do that commute five days a week is a, a big plus for the Connecticut lifestyle. Governor, appreciate the update today. Let's do this again soon. Governor Nedham on there of Connecticut from the Greenwich Economic <clears throat> Forum.